Castlevania II Simon's Quest is one of the most influential NES games ever made. Castlevania may be Konami's most popular franchise, and Konami is a company with a catalog filled with hits, including Silent Hill, Metal Gear, and even Yu-Gi-Oh! With games spanning across almost every console generation, comic books, and even a successful animated TV series, Castlevania is less of a game series and more of an institution. It's easy to forget that it all started with a trilogy of games on the NES. The first game is a stone-cold classic, and the third is possibly the most polished side-scrolling action game on the system, but Castlevania II Simon's Quest doesn't always get that same level of praise. Like many great Nintendo sequels, Simon's Quest takes risks and isn't just more of the same Castlevania that players expected after the first game. Instead of the linear experience of the original, Castlevania II features a non-linear open world. Players are free to explore the Transylvanian countryside as they search for the five mansions that house the grim remains of Count Dracula. Finding new items opens up new areas of the game, like the infamous red crystal that summons a tornado after kneeling at this dead end. This open structure is reminiscent of Nintendo's Metroid, and is somewhat responsible for this genre being called Metroidvania. Interestingly, when asked if Metroid's gameplay had any influence on Simon's Quest, designer Hitoshi Akamatsu said he was actually inspired by Maze of Golias, an obscure early Metroidvania game from Konami. The early reviews for Simon's Quest were positive, and while ultimately Konami would return to the linear structure of the first game for the next several entries in the series, many ideas first seen in Castlevania II would heavily influence 1997's Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which is not only one of the top 10 best games on the original PlayStation, but in a time when most franchises were transitioning to 3D, it was proof that 2D games were still valid. Assistant director Koji Igarashi said that the critical reaction to Simon's Quest is what allowed them to pitch the idea for Symphony of the Night to Konami. So let's be clear, if it wasn't for Castlevania 2, Symphony of the Night would not exist. Modern reception for Simon's Quest is more mixed. Most famously, it was the subject of James Rolfe's very first AVGN video, and some of his criticisms are valid. The translation is sloppy, and many of the game's puzzles would be nearly impossible to solve without a guide. To make matters worse, some of the clues given by the game's non-player characters are not just poorly translated, but straight up mislead the player. And sure, you die when you hit the water. But in a game with free exploration like this one, it's important to clearly indicate the game's borders. Despite the game's shortcomings, it still has that classic Castlevania action. You will whip your way through skeletons, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Grim Reaper, and return to Castlevania for a final confrontation with the Count. IGN listed this game as number 25 on their top 100 NES games of all time, and in 2008, Nintendo Power ranked it as their number 15 best game on the system. They also rated their classic Castlevania II issue cover as their worst ever, because parents complained the image of Simon holding Dracula's decapitated head gave their kids nightmares. Probably true, but that cover is still pretty awesome. If you want to play Simon's Quest today, it is available on the Castlevania Anniversary Collection and on the NES Classic Mini. You will have to compete with many of the challenges that the NES is notorious for, like invisible pit traps, instant death hazards, and the relentless enemies that attack during the Transylvanian Night. But what if I told you how to get the very best whip and weapons early so we'll be prepared for the game's most difficult enemies? 
what if I told you how to find all of the game's hidden items, so you'll be more than ready for the final battle with Dracula? And what if I told you how to get all three of the game's different endings, so you can see how this chapter of the Belmont Saga truly concludes? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we are doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Let's get started. We start Simon's quest in the town of Jova, and our first mission in the game is to gather up 100 hearts because hearts are money in this game and we need to use them to buy two key items here in Jova, each of which costs 50 hearts. Now, the fastest way to get those hearts is to come over here to the left of town into the Belasco Marsh and fight these two-headed creatures. They could possibly drop the half big hearts which are worth four each. But do you see how much damage they dealt to me? That is a very difficult area to handle when you're just starting out here in Simon's Quest. So I think it's probably better for what we're doing here to go to the right of town into the Jova Woods instead. Now before I go over there, I'm going to grab one of those key items. One of the nice things that the developers did for us was they gave us 50 hearts to start with. So we actually only need to get 50 more. The item I purchased is a weapon, and it's the Holy Water. The Holy Water doesn't deal a lot of damage. It deals the same amount as our basic whip that we have, but it's actually pretty good right now. The more important thing that the Holy Water does is that it can break false bricks. And until we get Dracula's Nail, that's the only way that you can actually destroy such bricks. The Holy Water very useful, you can see what it does here. And right now, I am just trying to build up hearts by fighting the Wolfman and the Skeleton here. These guys only drop the small hearts, and they're worth two instead of the four that the two-headed creatures drop on the left side of town. But we're not taking any damage by fighting these guys. One thing that happens here in Simon's Quest, if we were to lose all of our lives, well, then we would lose any hearts that we have, so that's not going to be very helpful. Now you can see here that we have transitioned from day to night, and now instead of fighting those monsters there on the right side of town, we can come back into town, and there's going to be zombies now. The zombies are a very good source of hearts, so we just kind of wanted to kill time until night came on the first day, and you see they drop those half big hearts and they only take two whips to defeat. Just hit these guys two times. I'm going to speed it up here. And just hang out here in front of the church. You can't go into the church during the night phase, but as soon as day breaks, if we're low on health, we can go into the church and if we talk to the priest there, we'll be able to refill all of our health. So just keep going, even if you already have the money that you need, we're going to need more, so just fight as many enemies as possible here while we're in Jova. We need to get 50 more so we can buy the white crystal, and it looks like morning is about to arrive. Each day night phase lasts about 3 minutes of real time. You can actually check the clock on the pause screen if you want to see what time it is. So, see it's 6 o'clock in the morning now, and I actually have well over 100 hearts, so we're doing good right now. Resting here at the church doesn't actually use up any of your game time. So, once you've refilled your health, we're going to head down, and I'm going to show you where the whip upgrade is in this town. Right now we have the Leather Whip, but if we wanted to spend 100 hearts, we could get the Thorn Whip. The Thorn Whip deals 2 damage instead of the 1 that our Leather Whip does now, and it has a little bit more range. 
I don't have enough money to buy that and the white crystal that I need. So I would rather just save my money so that we can buy the chain whip in the next town. The chain whip deals four damage and you don't have to have purchased the thorn whip to be able to upgrade to the chain whip. So we can just skip over the thorn whip for now. Now the white crystal on the other hand is absolutely mandatory. We need to buy that because it will reveal a hidden platform in the first mansion. You can get through the first mansion without doing that. It's possible to hit that invisible platform without being able to see it. But we definitely need the white crystal to be able to upgrade it to the blue crystal, which is critical for opening up a path later. In this area, be very careful of the fishman enemies. You can see how effective the holy water is at hitting enemies that are a lower position from you. Now, as you go through, you just want to be careful that nothing bumps you off the platform. There is knockback in this game. And if you land in the water, that's an instant death hazard, and you will lose a life. We need to be very careful that we don't fall into the water. And it looks like I just leveled up. This game has an interesting experience system to it. It's not necessary that you gain all of the experience levels. There are actually six to gain, but each time that you do, it will reduce the amount of damage that the enemies deal to you. You only gain experience points when you collect hearts. As you gain more levels, certain enemies and areas will no longer add to your experience total, so you won't be able to gain levels in the easier parts of the game. Right now, we are very close to the town of Veros, so I am just hanging out here, trying to collect as many hearts as I can, but we need to make sure that we get into the town of Veros before it turns to night, so that we can buy another item, the dagger, before the shops close for nightfall. Now when the time says 1800 hours, it will turn to nightfall, so if you pause the game and you see that you're around 1630 or 17, you need to head down the stairs and get to the town of Veros, because we do want to head to this seemingly empty store, break this invisible wall, and buy the dagger weapon from this merchant for 50 hearts. Now, the thorn whip that I was describing before deals two damage, and this dagger actually is free to use, we don't have to spend hearts, and also deals two damage. It also has enhanced range compared to our leather whip, which is really nice. This weapon is effectively just as good as the thorn whip, and that's one of the reasons why I don't like to buy that upgrade at all. Now, if I had 150 hearts, I would try to buy the Chain Whip upgrade before Night Falls also. You can see how much more effective the dagger is against these zombies. They normally would take 4 hits from the Leather Whip, but instead they only take 2 from the dagger. And if you group them together, you can even hit 2 at a time. We're just going to stay here in Veros tonight and fight the zombies with our dagger and try to collect as many hearts as we can. We need to get at least 150 so that we can buy that chain whip upgrade. And just stay here and fight the zombies. There is kind of a time limit on this game. We need to finish within eight days if we want to get the best ending. So we are going to try to make that pace. That's why we're not going to mess around and talk to a lot of the villagers. You don't use up time whenever you're inside buildings or mansions. It really only matters that we save time when we're out here in the overworld. So we can't waste a lot of days just hanging out in towns fighting zombies and building up hearts. I got 214 hearts, which is awesome. The most hearts that you can actually hold is 256. 
it was good that we bought the dagger before. If we didn't, we would actually have maxed out our hearts. So come into here, destroy the false floor, and we're going to buy this chain whip from the merchant for 150 hearts. The chain whip is a significant upgrade over our leather whip, dealing four times as much damage and having a decent amount of range as well. You can certainly see how effective it is against these skeletons in this area, which is called Dobby's Path. Now, that red liquid in the bottom of the screen is not water, that's a poison swamp. So, if you jump into that, you won't instantaneously die. You'll just take a slow amount of damage as long as you hang out in the swamp. Unlike clean water, the swamps are a little bit safer. Take out these ghostly eyeballs as you head up the stairs. If you head over to the left here, we'll reach Berkeley Mansion, but we want to go to the right on this side. There are some bats here. We know that bats are an obligatory enemy in every NES game. And if we use our holy water, we're going to be able to come over here to the left and find a hidden weapon, the Sacred Flame. Unlike the other weapons that we found so far, the Holy Water and the Dagger, the Sacred Flame is not free to use. It requires us to spend a heart each time we use it. But for that one heart, it deals 7 damage. Also, wherever it lands, it creates a fire, and enemies caught in that fire will take additional damage and also be stunned. The Sacred Flame is easily one of the game's most powerful weapons. It even works on bosses, and I'm not even just talking about the damage part, I'm talking about the stun part too. For now, I'm going to just use my dagger because I need to save as much money as possible to buy some upgrades that we need, but the Sacred Flame is awesome. Now, we're going to skip that stairway and head here to the right through the Algeba Woods. Now, if we would have gone down those stairs, we would hit a dead end because we need a blue crystal to enter Rover Mansion, and we won't be able to do that yet. Once we get into the town of Algeba here, use our holy water to break open the floor, and we will find another hidden vendor in a basement, and this one will sell us garlic. I don't know if it's a great business practice to hide your store in the bottom of a hidden basement, but I mean, I guess we're buying the garlic, so whatever works, guy. Now, we are only going to need two garlic in the entire game, so you don't need to buy any more. According to the instruction manual, the garlic can be used to weaken enemies, but I have never used it for that. Instead, we're going to use our two cloves of garlic to exchange for two very nice optional items. But before we do that, I want to make sure that we grab the blue crystal in this town before it turns to night. We are quickly running out of daylight. Over here we're going to find a man who doesn't understand how diamonds work. He wants to exchange his blue one for our white crystal. Whatever works for you, man, but the blue crystal is absolutely an upgrade. It does everything that the white crystal does, and more. Like I said, we are going to need to use it to open up Rover Mansion, but we're not going to do that just yet. Instead, we would really like to tackle Berkeley Mansion first, but I wanted to make sure we got all these upgrades including one right over here to the right of town in the nearby graveyard. And if we drop a clove of garlic right here at the beginning of the graveyard, suddenly a man will appear that will give us the silver knife. The silver knife is actually a pretty nice optional sub-weapon. It deals 7 points of damage, and it actually passes through enemies when it hits them, so that it can hit more enemies behind them. Each time you throw the silver knife though, it does cost a heart, so I'm going to stick to my standard dagger for now to save up money, 
we will need 200 hearts to be able to buy the next whip upgrade. We want to make sure we have that, and we're also going to need to make sure we have 50 hearts to buy an oak stake in the next mansion. Now that we have all those upgrades, we're going to start heading back to the left. That graveyard where we got the silver knife is about as far right as we can go right now. So we need to make our way all the way back to the left. And the way that the map of the game is laid out, if you would get all the way to the farthest right point in the map, that is Castlevania, which is Dracula's castle and the final stage of the game. But to get there, we actually have to go all the way to the left side of the map, where we'll hit a dead end called Deborah's Cliff. If we kneel at Deborah's Cliff and we have the red crystal equipped, we will catch a tornado, and that tornado will take us farther to the right than we've already been. Then we will be able to proceed farther into the game. Now it looks like I just got another level up, which is very nice. The second level up in the game also will give you more health, oh, and all the other level ups after that will also give you an increased level of hit points. Now we are in the Veros Woods here. The town of Veros is directly below us. So once we get across this screen, we are going to arrive at Berkeley Mansion, which is the first mansion in the game. The first thing that you'll notice when you enter Berkeley Mansion is this blue moving platform. But if you don't have your crystal equipped, that platform will be invisible. So if you're not seeing a platform, make sure that you have that crystal equipped. Head on over to the right across this and up the stairs. Watch out for the slime enemies and attack the gargoyle as you come across to the left. While we're in the mansions, the time does not advance, so you can take as much time as you need in the mansions. You don't have to worry about the days and nights going on while you're in here. Also, if you're interested in leveling up your experience, this is a good place where you can just sit around and kill enemies without wasting time in the game. Now, as we come across here to the right, there's going to be some invisible blocks. So we're going to need to be aware of them as we make this next jump. It's the first two on the edge there. You see how I jumped through those? Do not try to jump onto those blocks. You'll have to kind of head back around and get back on top. Now below us here, there is a merchant that sells a steak. There's going to be a steak merchant in all five of the mansions. And we need to get that steak so that we can open the crystal ball at the end which will contain one of Dracula's body parts. So we're going to come across here, come up the stairs, and over to the left. The oak stake always costs 50 hearts, and you can only hold one at a time, and as soon as you use it, it's gone. So be careful to not have it equipped. I'm going to put the holy water on for now so that uh, we can reveal some invisible platforms down here. But make sure that you don't put on that oak stake. If you use it accidentally, you'll be very upset about that. So we're going to come over here to the right. And right in front of this pillar, there are some invisible platforms. So jump over where you see that pillar. And come up the stairs here. And we're going to find the first piece of Dracula, the rib. So use your oak stake by pressing up and B. And there it is. You now possess Dracula's rib. You think they could have proofread this game a little bit before they released it to the public. I think almost anyone would have noticed that. We can drop down through the floor near that pillar, and that's actually going to be a shortcut that will help us get out of the mansion quickly instead of having to go all the way back the same way that we came. This is just going to take us straight across to the entrance very very convenient. 
These mansions are a lot like the palaces in Zelda 2, so we need to complete them. This is the goal to completing the game, and they actually can be completed in any order. So while this is the easiest of the mansions, we could actually have come to this one much later. I certainly like Dracula's rib as a power-up that we can use. So. Whenever we equip Dracula's rib, it actually creates a shield for us. The shield can protect you from enemy projectiles, it doesn't protect you from running into the enemies. So the rib is something I like to keep equipped for most of the game. It's an item that we'll just have on a lot. You don't know when enemies are going to be shooting fireballs at you. So it's nice to have the rib on just for those kind of occasions. Uh, these fishman enemies that come out of the water here, they can shoot at you. So, well, looks like we got to the morning, that's good. A lot of people, including the angry video game nerd, complain how long the transition takes from night to day, and it's about like 10 seconds. I do agree that that takes a long time, but I kind of wonder, is it because this game was originally on the Famicom Disk System? And the Famicom Disk System is notorious for having long load times, so maybe they made that transition animation take some time to kind of cover up the fact that the disk system was loading, and they didn't change it whenever they made it for the US version with the much faster cartridges. Now we've actually made it all the way back to the town of Jova, and I'm gonna stop up here at the church to refill our health because we're going to be heading to the left of town and into the very dangerous Belasco Marsh. We know from the beginning of the game that there's going to be the two-headed creatures there, and we will see how effective that Dracula's rib is once we get over here onto the left. The monsters shoot fire from their mouths, and you can just block it. I always thought those guys were werewolves and not two-headed monsters. I didn't notice the other head. It's not very prominent. Now, coming over here, we have to cross this poisonous swamp and watch out for the mud man as well. You can use your shield to deflect their shots. But you just want to kind of keep jumping into the air so you don't spend a lot of time down in the swamp and end up taking more damage than you need to. This is the Dead River, where we will meet the Ferryman. It says in the Nintendo Power Guide that you need to equip the crystal for him to take you over to the town of Alba. And I find myself just doing it out of habit because I've been playing this game for years and I always equip the crystal to take you to Alba. But I did test it, and it doesn't matter. You don't actually need to equip the crystal. As long as you have any other item other than Dracula's heart equipped, you'll be totally fine. Here in the town of Alba, we'll meet a man who will exchange a red crystal for a blue one, which is very useful. You don't necessarily need the red crystal to beat the game, there are ways to use damage boosts to get to other parts of the game without it, but it's a very easy item to obtain, so just get the red crystal and we are certainly going to use it in this run. Up here we can stay at the church to get our health back. And in this town, you also can buy laurels for 50 hearts, but I need to save all of my money because in the next town, we're going to buy the best whip that we can buy with hearts, the Morning Star. And it costs a lot of hearts. It costs 200 to buy it.
before we can get that morning star, we need to cross the Sodom Woods. And it's a horrible night to have a curse. It's interesting that this game is called Simon's Quest and Castlevania 3 is actually called Dracula's Curse when this is the game that really deals with the curse. I mean, we're trying to find Dracula's body parts so that we can rid ourselves of the curse. Well, in any case, the path forks here, and if we were to head over to the left on the top, we would get to the town of Ondul. But I'm going to take a detour here. Now watch out, there's an invisible platform four over there, so make sure to jump over that. And we'll head here into the Storagoy Graveyard. Now, here at the end of the Storagoy Graveyard, we will be able to find an optional upgrade that will allow us to hold eight laurels and eight garlics instead of the normal four. It doesn't sound like a very important upgrade, but it actually is worth getting. Be careful of the slimes here. They jump very erratically and actually can really mess you up. Be cautious of them and try to kill them if you can. The zombie hands are easy to deal with. Now here we're going to use a garlic again. And this guy will give you a silk bag. And that's that upgrade that we were talking about. Before we move on, watch what happens if you get a damage boost off this slime and get up onto this inaccessible cliff. Normally you wouldn't be able to jump up here, and suddenly we're teleported way to the right of the map to Laruba Mansion. Now, we can't actually get back to the graveyard from here. We've been warped to the other side of the map, but it's kind of a neat trick. Nothing that we have to do to be able to win the game, but something that I did want to show you before we move on. So we're just going to head back the same way we came to the right across the graveyard. And I am getting very low on health, so I'm going to take a death here. This area is pretty challenging, especially with the experience level that we have here. I don't think the experience levels are super important. But if you're struggling with the game, you may want to spend time in some of the mansions trying to build up a level each time you go through one of them. Now down here we have to walk through a poison swamp and we're going to head up these stairs and across the top of the Sodom Woods and into the town of Ondul. These enemies are called Freddies, and they'll actually drop big hearts worth eight hearts. So those are very convenient. We need to make sure we have 200 hearts to buy the Morning Star. As you travel across this area, make sure to kill any enemies if you don't have enough hearts yet. We will need that 200 as we get into the next town. And here we are. Now, it's still night, so I'm going to need to just kind of hang out here until the night wears off. And in the meantime, I can fight some more zombies and just build up myself until I have maximum hearts. Just going to fight over here. And I'm going to head right to the area where the Morning Star is sold, which is here. And... Coincidentally, we made it just in time for morning to hit. I have 256 hearts, which is the maximum I can hold. So we're going to head down the stairs here. No secret hiding spot for this vendor. Just head down into his shop. And we're going to spend 200 hearts to buy the Morning Star. The Morning Star is very powerful. It deals a whopping 8 damage, making it more powerful than our Sacred Flame and the Silver Knife. It also has very nice range. The Morning Star is the second most powerful whip, and if we want to obtain the most powerful whip, the Flame Whip, we must have it. 
head here to the left of town, fighting off these pirate ghost and mummy enemies. When you get to these platforms, make sure to jump when they're at their highest point and whip in mid-air as you jump. Whipping when you jump makes you jump a little bit higher and is very important. Equip the red crystal here at Deborah's Cliff and just kneel down. Wait for a while and this tornado will appear and it's going to transport us way to the right across the map, although it looks like it's moving us left, to Bodley Mansion. But we're not going to go in there just yet. Head over to the left for now. Be careful as you enter this screen to not walk into the water. You need to have your crystal equipped. Just kneel down for a while and a path will appear. You need to have at least the blue crystal for that, but we have the red crystal, which is the most powerful, so we'll be totally fine. Now in this area, this is where we can find the flame whip. So head across here, make sure to use whip jumps, and we will use our holy water to break the wall right here. In here, this guy will power up our Morning Star. And now we have the Flame Whip. If you thought the 8 damage that the Morning Star did was good, the Flame Whip does 15. We are now ready to take on whatever challenge this game can throw at us. Head back across the platforms. And this time we're going to go up above them and use our Holy Water to break this wall and proceed to the left. Watch out for these flying skulls. Carefully whip jumping across the platforms and heading to the left. Keep proceeding on. Now, there's a lot of area here that you can explore, but there doesn't seem to be anything good hidden in it. Just keep moving on and take the road over here to the left. You'll need Dracula's rib to shield you from the flamethrowers as we travel left across the devious woods. Now your flame whip is actually very effective against the flamethrower enemies, which seems maybe a little bit counterintuitive. Just whip your way through all of the enemies and you can just see the power of this weapon. Over here, we will enter a new area called the Joma Marsh. This area is filled with poisonous swamps, so it would be nice to have some laurels here, and if you do have them, make sure to use them. That enemy is called a Ghastly Leech, and I just don't have enough health to cross this swamp, so I took a death here, and I'm going to use my full health to proceed to the left. It's actually not that big of a deal to die anymore because we've bought the most expensive item in the game, so losing our hearts at this point is not quite the crisis that it would have been before. Just keep trying to jump up and down as I cross this poisonous swamp. Watching out for these ghastly leeches and the other enemy, the one that shoots at you, is called a slimy bar sinister. I can't make this stuff up, that's exactly what it's called. And in the middle of the Joma Marsh is the Laruba Mansion. You'll remember Laruba Mansion, this is that area that we could have teleported to from the graveyard before. And it's actually one of the more difficult of the mansions, so we're doing them a little bit out of order here. But we have the most powerful whip now, so we can certainly take on anything. These enemies are tough, but we're still defeating them in two swings of the flame whip. We don't have a stake at this point, so we need to make sure that we have 50 hearts so that we can buy one from this mansion's stake vendor. Don't go up that ladder, there's nothing good hidden up there. We're just going to head over to the right, whip your way through these skeleton knights, and watch out for the ones that throw the bones at you. They're pretty dangerous, and the bones can do some decent damage. Head over here, and yeah, it's, you can just kind of jump over this guy. We need to go up to the top here, because that's where we're going to be able to buy a stake. 
head on up to the right. Just come across and watch out for those spikes. They can deal you damage. And here is the stake vendor. So we're gonna spend 50 hearts and get an oak stake. Thank you very much. In pretty much all of the mansions, the Dracula body part that we're looking for is in the lower right corner. And this one's no different. It's just how you get to the lower right corner that's the trick. So we're gonna head over this spiky pit. It's not an instant death hazard, but it can damage you. And you wanna kinda head to the right corner when you drop down here. There's a bunch of enemies on this floor. Head down and make sure to take a good jump to the right here. You don't wanna end up on the left side of that barrier. You won't be able to jump up over it. And this guy takes just a ton of hits to kill with the holy water, but I don't want to take damage by just dropping on top of him. So I'm just going to stand here and spam the holy water until he dies. There's no time limit when we're inside the mansions here. There's no reason to not do that, really. And we're going to come down here to the right. Well, we've hit our first boss. This boss is known as Vampira, and you want to kind of stand here, right? You can see where I'm at in relationship to the lattice and the background. And when it starts shooting these fireballs, just stand here with your rib equipped, and you'll be able to block them and try to get one or two hits each time as it floats around in your direction. This boss is pretty easy but we definitely need to defeat her to be able to get the cross. If we don't have the cross, we won't be able to get into Castlevania and finish the game, so it is a mandatory item. And we now possess Dracula's Ring. Dracula's Ring, unfortunately, is the most useless of Dracula's body parts. Now you'll see that Vampira has respawned. Just ignore her and walk under to the left. Before we leave La Ruba Mansion, we're going to come over here and we can get eight free laurels. Laurels normally cost 50 hearts for two. So because we have the silk bag, this woman will give us maximum laurels, which is eight. And what do you see what these do? So I'm gonna turn one on here. It's a good spot to use one. And there at the bottom you see where it says eight when activated they make you temporarily invincible which is just awesome now these come really in handy when we have to go through those poisonous swamps but if you just want to avoid some enemies i mean the laurels are amazing they even work on bosses eight free laurels very good deal and that's the reason why we wanted to get that silk bag before so that we could take advantage of this offer if we didn't have it we'd only get four laurels here now don't worry about ever equipping dracula's ring it doesn't do anything yeah cool item thanks i don't even know why dracula's ring it's not even a body part why not Dracula's fangs? The Dracula's leg? I don't know, did they run out of parts? Over here, we'll hit the east side of the Joma Marsh. We're going to want to use our laurels so we don't take any more damage here in the poison swamp. Very nice. Head over here to the left, and this is the Carmilla Cemetery. Now, we saw this from the other side before, whenever we got that silver knife. Oh, and it looks like I leveled up again. Nice. Alright, keep heading over to the left, and this is the jump we wouldn't have been able to make from the left side. So now, we're going to be all the way back to the town of Algeba and we're gonna keep working our way back to the left and pick up any of the mansions that we haven't gone to along the way. 
The next thing that we need to do is go to Rover Mansion, where we will be able to get Dracula's heart. Unlike the ring, which does nothing. I don't know, what is it? It's like a horcrux? I don't, I don't know why we have Dracula's ring. But we're going to get Dracula's heart, which now that's a body part, right? And Dracula's heart serves a very important purpose. We need to equip it when we meet the fairy man at the dead river again. And if we have the heart equipped, he'll actually take us to a different location. Now, the last time we came through here, we skipped this part because we didn't have the blue crystal yet. And the blue crystal is needed whenever you get to those lake areas and if you kneel down in front of any of the lakes in this game it opens up a path below the lake we're gonna head over to the right don't go running off to the right edge though you don't want to walk into the water equip your crystal and just kneel down and wait and the path to rover mansion will appear head on over to the right and there it is Rover Mansion has a very sneaky beginning to it. As you head across to the right, it looks like you need to go up these stairs and work your way across the top of the mansion. But no, you need to do a whip jump here and then jump through the wall on the right. That wall is actually an illusion. Now, this is the actual part of the mansion that you need to go into. The enemies here are certainly a bit easier than the ones we faced in the Ruba Mansion. Watch out for this moving platform, you don't want it to knock you off into the water. Take out the Skeleton Knight, and down here on the bottom, you'll be able to buy an Oak Steak for the 50 hearts, as usual. We will need that steak to be able to get the heart at the end of the mansion. We'll want to come back here to the left and take the stairway up. Rover Mansion does have one kind of tricky platforming sequence in it, and you'll be seeing that shortly. Keep taking the stairways up. Once you get up to the top, we're going to head over to the right. Just whip through these guys. It seems like you get a free hit uh, after you level up, so I think that's why I didn't take damage there kind of strange though I'm not gonna lie and here it is this part's tricky you need to walk to the edge of the platform and jump across if you bump your head you'll fall down and you'll need to repeat it again just keep trying that part until you get it it is a little bit tricky but you just want to keep your momentum as you move left right left right and weave between the platforms Come down here, we will equip our oak stake. And we now possess Dracula's heart. <laughs> In the instruction manual, it says, watch out, the heart attacks. And it actually says some stupid little jokes for all of Dracula's body parts. I think it would have been a lot better if Maybe they gave us a clue as to what it actually does. I will include those on the graphics on the side so you can see what the instruction manual says about Dracula's body parts. Now that we have Dracula's heart, you will exit Rover Mansion the same way you came in, and then just make your way up out through the left, and you'll have to take the lower path across these moving platforms this time. They're a little bit dangerous, so be careful that you don't end up in the water. Make your way across to the left. We will be heading back the same way that we came across previously. So we're just making our way back across the game to the original town of Jova. And once we get there, we're just going to head across the marsh and get back to the dead river so that we can show the ferryman our Dracula heart and he'll be able to take us to the next mansion and that mansion is called Bram's. 
One thing that I would like to highlight as we go back across the game here is how nice the graphics look on this game versus the other two Castlevanias on the NES. If you look at Castlevania 1 or Castlevania 3, the top 20% of the screen is covered in a black bar and it has a lot of player information up there. So your health bar, how many hearts you have, your sub weapon. It even has a boss health bar, which is always present even when you're not fighting against a boss. That actually really constrains the screen. And while those games are great, I love the way the Castlevania 2 looks. Everything is huge, it's a full bleed to the end of the screen. The health bar is over on the left in that more Mega Man style. And it's just kind of neatly overlaid over the graphics. Now until we get to Castlevania 4 on the Super Nintendo, they don't do a lot of overlay. I think it would have been nice if maybe they had reworked the interface for Castlevania 3 to be something between this and the original game instead of going just right back to the look of the much older original. It's kind of a weird choice. This game has a more advanced look to it in that way. Be careful as you cross these platforms that you don't fall in or get hit by the fishman enemies. We have the flame whip now, so these enemies are going to be easily destroyed. Now we're back into some much simpler areas of the game, and these enemies are not going to be giving us experience points anymore. If we're interested in raising our experience level, these guys here are not going to do it anymore. It's just too easy. And we're back at the town of Jova. We're going to come up to the church and refill our health as we make our push towards the end of the game. We only need to do two more mansions. The next one is going to be Bram's Mansion. And that's the one that the Ferryman will be able to take us to. The final mansion is Bodley Mansion. And that's the one that we got dropped off in front of whenever we took the tornado earlier. Basically what we're going to do is go hit up Bram's Mansion and once we do that, get back to Deborah's Cliff and take the tornado on to the end of the game. This will be the last time that we cross the Belasco Marsh. It used to be a very difficult area for us to traverse, but now we have the Flame Whip and we even have Laurels, so we won't have to take any damage as we cross the Poison Swamp area over here to the left. So I'm going to switch those on now. Laurels, and here we go. Whip through these mud men, but they can't damage you while the laurels are being used. And we had just enough to get through the poison swamp unscathed. Now we're going to equip that heart. It's that little red circle to the right of the rib. And now, instead of taking us to the town of Alba, He's going to take us over here, which is Bram's Mansion. Now, before I go into Bram's Mansion, I'm going to head over here where we can get an optional item. This item is very optional, and this part is very tough. You want to get to the edge of each of these blocks and jump when it's at its highest point, and make sure you do a whip jump so that you get that extra air. So jump and whip. Jump and whip. Jump, whip. And don't forget to do a whip jump on the last one. You do not want to end up in the water. And we'll go over here. Whip your way through these pirate ghosts and these endangered bald eagles. And when you get to the end of this area, there will be some Medusa heads because, hey, it wouldn't be a Castlevania game without Medusa heads. 
although they don't do their typical sine wave pattern in this game. This man will give us a diamond. The diamond is an interesting sub-weapon. It deals 7 damage, and it costs 1 heart to use. It does this ricochet attack. Whenever it hits walls, it will bounce off. I haven't found the diamond to be particularly useful. It can be good in some tight and narrow spaces. The difficulty of getting across these platforms to get it makes me think that there's a good chance that it might not be worth it. Head back across these platforms one more time if you went to get the diamond. If you didn't go get it, I don't think you'll really miss it too much, but I want to show you where all the items in the game are, and the diamond is one of them. Now we're going to enter Bram's Mansion. Bram's is actually one of the larger mansions in the game. What we'll need to do here is make your way to the right and then go up three flights of stairs. When we get to the top of the stairs, we'll want to head back to the left. So basically what we're trying to do in this mansion is make our way to the top left corner and then double back across the top of the mansion to the right and make our way down to the lower right hand corner where we will find Dracula's eyeball. Dracula's eyeball is about as useful as Dracula's ring. I mean at least it's a legitimate body part. What it can do for us is there are hidden tip books. There are these like red leather bound tomes hidden in the walls in the game's mansion. If you have the eyeball equipped, you can see where those tip books are located. The tips are super cryptic, and you need to have the heart just to get to this mansion. By the time you have Dracula's eyeball, you're going to be most of the way through the game anyways, and you're not going to really need those tips. It's better than the do-nothing that the ring is, I suppose. When I was a kid, if I found any of those tip books, I would definitely write those tips down. I mean, they were so well hidden that I knew that they had to be something important. I think it would be really cool if you got some kind of bonus for finding all of those. You don't. In any case, make sure to buy a steak on your way down to the bottom. It's the typical 50 hearts as it always is and we're going to need that stake when we get to the treasure room. Before we get there, we're going to fight the game's second boss, the Grim Reaper, or as he's often known, Death. In the original Castlevania, the Grim Reaper is one of the most difficult bosses in the game, although there is an easy trick to beating him by just spamming him with holy waters. In this game, we're going to do something similar. Just spam him with the Sacred Flame. He'll get stuck in the flame and won't be able to move. And once he's defeated, we'll be able to obtain the Golden Knife. I find it interesting that it says, You now possess the Golden Knife, spelled properly. And right in the next room, we see that same, You now possess Dracula's Eyeball misspelling. You can get it right here, but you can't get it right over there. Now, before we leave this mansion, this is critical. We need to buy another steak. Now, you can see what the golden knife does. It actually requires two hearts to use, but it deals 15 damage just like our flame whip does, and it can stun enemies like the sacred flame. The Golden Knife is like one of the ultimate weapons in the game. It is very, very powerful. But make sure you save your last 50 hearts to be able to buy this second stake up here. In the final mansion, it's going to be so easy to get through if we bring a stake with us. But if you need to find the stake vendor in there, 
Whew, you have to go through all kind of hoops to get a stake in that place. We're going to make sure that we bring a stake with us when we get to Bodley Mansion. Once you have that second stake, just make your way out the same exact way you came in. And that's it. Only one more mansion to go. We're going to head back to the right and meet up with the ferryman. Make sure you don't have the heart equipped. As long as you don't have the heart equipped, he's going to take us back to the right and then we're going to let him bounce us back to the left again. That will take us to the town of Alba. So we're just going to ride along. Make sure you don't get hit by any of the fishman enemies that bounce out and get knocked into the water. Take out these two-headed creatures and make your way over to the left. We're going to cut through the town. It looks like the morning has arrived. We can actually now use the church here to refill our health, so this is a good opportunity to do that. I am very low on health, so it probably would have been worth it to just kind of stand in front of the church and wait for it to open up at this point in the game. I would much rather have full health as I move forward here. But we're going to go all the way up to the top tier. Head over and there's the church. We will talk to the priest and get ourselves healed. Then we're going to move on. We're going to have to go back across the Sodom Woods. We're going to make our way all the way over to the left to Deborah's Cliff where we'll be able to use our red crystal again and we'll be able to take the tornado back to Bodley Mansion which is exactly where we need to go. Bodley Mansion is conveniently located just a hop skip and a jump away from Castle Castlevania which is our ultimate destination. You can see that we're not missing very many items at this point. Watch out for these dragon bones as you move forward here. We don't want to go down here, we just want to stay on the top level. Take out the skeletons and the freddies as you move forward. The slimes, as we know, are dangerous, so I think I'm just going to use one of my laurels here. I just don't see why not. We'll have another opportunity to purchase laurels before we go and fight the final boss, so eh, there's no reason to not use the laurels at that point. I do like to turn them off when I'm not using them to make sure that I don't accidentally use laurels when I don't want to. We're just going to make our way across the town here. We'll be back to the wasteland. And at the end, we'll see Deborah's Cliff. We'll need to make sure that we have our red crystal equipped. We'll be able to take the tornado exactly where we need to go. And this is it. We're heading on to our final mansion. So just kneel down. And honestly, I don't know how you would have figured this out without Nintendo Power. Uh, there is a clue that tells you to bang your head against the cliff, but like, really? That's a tough one. This is Bodley Mansion. Now, Bodley Mansion is super easy if you know the trick. You can go through the wall right here. And once you get to the other side, we're going to need to use our holy water to break through these false bricks. Make sure you break the ones ahead of you before you jump to the next platform. You don't want to end up in the water here. Just make your way across and we'll be on our way to get our next body part. If you didn't bring a stake with you, getting to the stake dealer in this place, you've got to go up to the top of the mansion and down around. Make sure to bring a steak from another mansion. If you have to go to another mansion and buy a steak, go get one. And here it is. Use the steak. 
and we'll be able to get Dracula's Nail. We finally have all of Dracula's body parts and his ring also, which I guess is important for some reason. We're now able to head over to Castlevania where we will be able to burn those items and summon the Count for one last battle. First we need to just head back out the same way we came and we can also see what Dracula's Nail does here. See how our whip doesn't destroy that block? Well if we equip Dracula's Nail, now our whip is infused with the power of holy water and can break false bricks. At least it does something. Now I'm going to equip the rib and just make my way across the false wall and back out of the mansion. Once we get out of the mansion, we're just going to start making our way to the right and heading on to the end of the game. Whip your way through the mummies in this area. You'll notice that these enemies are a little bit more powerful as we move forward into this area. Watch out for these Birdman guys. They can land on the ground and start walking around. And you also face off with some of those Medusa heads again, but they're not a real problem. And this town, the town of Doina, is our last stop on our way to Castlevania. Here, we'll be able to stay at a church to refill our health one last time. There also is a vendor in the last door at the end of the town. So we're going to stop there as well. This is where we can buy laurels. If you head in here and just go down to the bottom, you will find the laurel vendor and you will be able to buy two laurels for 50 hearts. You can actually buy more than just two, so you may want to max yourself out on laurels. The only thing you really need to use your hearts for after this is to maybe fuel some of your sub weapons. You won't need very many laurels to fight the final boss if that's how you'd like to beat him. Now you'll notice here that I was able to kill the fishman enemy that appeared during the day with one swing of my whip, but now they actually take two. So these ones at night are a little bit more powerful. So I used the laurels to go across that spot just to be extra safe. I'm down to my last life and I'd like to try to get through this without getting a game over, although I mean, it's not like a game over would be a terrible disaster here. And I'm going to make my way through some more of these two-headed creatures. These are the most powerful gold variety. I'm going to use another laurels here to go across this poison swamp. And as we come across the next screen, this area forks. And you'll want to take the stairs down here. The other way leads to a dead end. And that's not the way we want to go. So take the lower route here. We will find the town of Yomi. The town of Yomi is kind of a creepy ghost town. There's not really a lot going on here, so you just want to pass through. At night, it appears that we'll be assaulted by some ravens. So I'm just going to take them out as I move along through the town. Here on the other side, we are going to be so close that we can taste it. This area is called the Vlad Graveyard. And this is one of the final areas in the game where there are even enemies to face us. These are some of the most powerful that we'll have to fight. And a lot of them take several hits from the Flame Whip. Which is saying a lot since the Flame Whip does a ton of damage. Make your way across. Here we can use Dracula's nail to break the wall. And this is the bridge to Castlevania. If we don't have the cross, we won't be able to get into Castlevania. 
and that's why we had to fight that vampire boss earlier. Make your way in, and this is it. Once we get inside Castlevania, the timer will stop, so as long as we're not into the 8th day already, we will be able to get the best ending here. If you'd like to try some of the other endings, you can just kind of hang out in that West Bridge area and wait for the time to go by. There's no enemies there. You need to get through it fast to see the best ending, but if you want to see the other two, that's a good way to do it. Make your way down to the bottom here and then head across to the left. You want to take the stairs up and make a big whip jump across this gap. Jump. There you go. This area reminds me a lot of the fifth area near the end of the original game, which I think is a nice homage to the original. And down here, we will come to the final room where we'll finally go toe to toe with Dracula. I'm going to equip the laurels and we're going to explore all three endings here. So I'm also going to show you three different strategies for defeating Dracula. Once you get into the room, you will burn the five body parts and Drac will appear. Make sure to back to the left before Dracula appears so he doesn't hit you right when he appears on the screen. And then you can just use your laurels, stand in this spot and just start whipping and he will go down super fast. Now all we have to do is just sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. This ending with the red sky in the background is the one that you get for finishing the game the fastest. However, it's not necessarily the best ending as far as the story goes. Some may speculate that this is actually more like the second best ending, and maybe it's possible that the programmers put them in in the wrong order. I do really like this particular ending. I think it's the most fun, but only because of the very last scene that we'll see. It also seems to be the longest of the three endings. Maybe they thought that was a good reason to have it be the one that you get for finishing the game most quickly. In any case, it certainly doesn't seem like Dracula is gone forever when this one ends. Well, see what you think about it. Yeah, I like this part where Dracula's hand comes out of the grave. It's pretty cool. All right, here is our second Dracula strategy. This one is using the Sacred Flame. So just make sure that there's always a Sacred Flame burning right in the middle. And whenever Dracula appears, he'll get stuck in the Sacred Flame and won't be able to move. You'll also be able to get in a couple whip hits too, which will deal more damage than the flames. But you just want to make sure that you keep him stunned. I think it's a little bit more difficult than beating him using the laurels, but the laurels are a consumable weapon that you only have a few uses of, so if you don't have any laurels available, I do think that the sacred flame is a good option. This is the game's second ending, and this is the ending that you get if you finish between 8 and 16 days. I think this one is the ending that most people will get on their first playthrough if they're not trying to finish the game fast enough to get that best ending. I kind of think that this is the worst of the three endings because it ends with Simon dying. He succumbs to the wounds. Yeah, this is definitely the ending that I got the first time that I finished the game and 
I thought that I must have done pretty bad to get this ending, but this is not the actual slowest ending that you can get. There is one more after this. This is ending number two. You get it for finishing between 8 and 16 days. And the final ending you'll be able to get for finishing any time after day 16 has begun. My third Dracula strategy is to try that golden knife. The golden knife can also stun Dracula and it does a ton of damage. This might even be better than the sacred flame. The idea is the same. Just keep hitting him with the golden knife and he will go down very fast. This gray background ending is the final of the three. This is arguably the best of the three endings, although it is probably the easiest one to get. You can just take as much time as you want to get this ending, but at the end of this one, Simon Belmont doesn't die, peace has been restored to Transylvania, and Dracula doesn't come back from the grave. So maybe this should have been the ending that you get for finishing the fastest instead of the slowest? Well, I hope this video has helped you to defeat Dracula and rid yourself from his curse forever. If it did, make sure to give it a like and be sure to subscribe for more videos because there will always be another confrontation with Dracula and that's why we'll be back next week with another game you can beat. Thanks for watching.